And of course, it had a very quirky charm to it. Uh, you'll remember in the beginning there was a mention of the use of slang and colloqu colloquialisms. Um, this was published between 26 to 28, so you do have to remember the time period that it was published in. And uh, the use of the colloquialisms in there are sometimes a little bit jarring, uh, as my example shows. Uh, uh, in this panel specifically, the New Filipinas or bust. Uh, New Filipinas was actually a term that was used for Texas at the time because it was way, way before it was uh, a territory or a state of any kind. That was just one of the area names. And that is a reference to the jalopies of the 20s time period where college students were painting slogans on the sides of their cars. So that's what that joke was about. You're in the Army Now was a uh, song from the World War I era. So that's what that reference was. And, uh, and this one, um, yeah, I got nothing on this one. I, <laughs> Really, I don't get that one. I, I'm assuming that that must be how some people spoke back then, but I don't really understand the concept. Personally, I like okra. <laughs> but he also told a real history. And uh, one of the nice things about the medium of comic books and comic strips is the ability to mix art and words together, to get pictures and also to explain things in detail at the same time. And they were able to do so very well. They were able to present very detailed maps. They were able to help fix places and people in the minds of the reader, and at the same time, to put people in those locations. So you're no longer looking at a map. You knew people that lived there. You knew what was going on in that location. It makes it mean more to you. They're also able to use it on a smaller scale, not just grand maps, but also to do diagrams of specific areas to explain events that as they were unfolding. So in this instance, you're able to see the ship, you see the plan, but in the next panel, there's people on the ship. It makes it more meaningful to you. And they also had a great skill for maps and diagrams. This is the first panel of one of the four panel sequences for one day. The second panel shows a battle formation. The third panel explains the decoy line at the beginning of the battle formation. And the fourth panel shows the direction for which, from which the opposing forces, the Texans, were approaching. So they were very quickly in four panels to explain a very complex layout of forces. This could have been done simply in text, but by doing it visually, as you're going to find in the next day, they're able to show you the movement of the forces through the course of the battle and why the strategy worked the way it did. Uh, also, that I made a very rough attempt at showing you the interior layout of the large book. They took the four panels and when they cut them up, they laid them out on the page in a nine panel grid. The fifth panel in the middle was the line that originally ran under the four panels in the newspaper. So this is the beginning of the next day's strip now, the very first one. You can see the Texans advancing on the Spaniards. Second panel shows the, the decoy line fleeing and the Texans not realizing they're running into a trap pursue them. The news titans and the trap is sprung. The Texans found themselves surrounded with cannons on both sides of the army. Very complex battle formation, very easily explained in just a few panels. And uh, if you just simply read this in a textbook, that battle may not have meant near as much to you, but seeing the forces move you really see the tragedy of what happened to the Texans in this case. The other nice thing is that the medium allowed colorful characters to come to life. Sometimes exaggerated a little bit. Sometimes not exaggerated at all. And it allowed for classic moments of Texas history to become forever embedded into the minds of young readers. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't point out that not all is rosy. Um, you have to remember the time in which the period, the period in which the work was produced, and it was created in 1926. Times were different then. Uh, what was acceptable, even commonplace then, is not always acceptable by today's standards. Uh, bear in mind, though, the work was on, only covered history up to the point of Reconstruction in Texas after the Civil War, and in 1928. The way ethnicities were portrayed in comic strips tended to be um, less than favorable.
Aside from their physical appearance, most ethnicities were treated fairly well in the work, however. Uh, the American Indians were, were depicted as either friends or enemies, depending on the time period, who was dealing with them, etc. Uh, blacks were shown going to schools at one point. No attempt was made to depict any one race as inferior. And in fact, as the majority of the work centers on Anglos in the story, uh, the butts of the jokes tended to be the Anglos in most cases. These ethnic depictions, however, were some of the main targets in the 1970s when, eth when efforts were made to sanitize the work and reproduce it at that time. Texas history paved the way for future sequential art books to follow. Unfortunately, none did. <laughs> uh, however, I do feel that this would be a great template for someone to look at what happened here in Texas and maybe try and find a way to replicate this and get comics back in the classrooms. Uh, the unfortunate thing is that this really has become a lost piece of comics history and that outside of the state of Texas, almost no one has ever heard of this book whatsoever. But to this day, if you find some of the old timers and ask them, you'll find people that actually were issued these textbooks and remember them quite fondly. Uh, these books help inspire not only a generation of students, but they inspired some cartoonists, some very well-known cartoon, uh, well cartoonists. Jack Jackson himself, uh, before his untimely death in 2006, I'd had the honor of speaking with him, and he informed me that this was a book that he had received as a child and was one of the things instrumental in encouraging him to become a cartoonist in the first place. Ben Sargent who's an editorial cartoonist for the Austin American Statesman, also counts this book as one of his inspirations. And Fort Worth's own Michael H. Price counts this as some, one of his inspirations as well. So I thank you for your time, and that's the material I had.